scripture. I ask God's people to stand, but we will not ask that at this time because we have just a, a few fleeting moments and I want to capture every one. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, the Apostle Paul wrote to the saints of this church saying, and he gave some of the apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, please, please, Lord, allow me to communicate this truth to your people. Please, Lord, during these moments, please, beyond my feeble effort, please speak to us. We pray that the Holy Spirit would make these truths to be evident in our understanding and a reality in our lives. Yes. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We long to feel the blowing of the wind. You say, preacher, you do understand it's the month of March, don't you? I speak of the wind of heaven. We long to feel the blowing of the wind. I long for those days when I can feel the wind blowing in my hair again. <laughs> we long to feel the blow. I speak of that celestial wind. When God blesses his people and moves in his church. I think about the Pentecostal wind. That moment when the Holy Spirit in great power, a rushing mighty wind blew upon the congregation. I'm glad, my friend, for Pentecostal power. Yes. Pentecost happened but once, but the power is still available to us today. That's right. Oh, to have that power, that evident power that is not displayed through some theatrical drama of speaking in some gibberish, but to have that longing of which Paul spoke just to speak in a few simple plain words that a man can understand the wonderful message of Jesus Christ with power from above, with boldness that is evident in that life that is spirit filled. It's amazing that those who claim to speak in unknown tongues do very little to even tell their neighbor across the street. Right, yes. And certainly never venture out to other countries where they can, they claim, speak in other tongues. When at Pentecost, the Bible says in a wonderful, yeah. true, miraculous work <clears throat> that God enabled every ear to understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, so oftentimes, men claim to have a gift they don't have, they speak, and nobody understands. Mm -hmm. right. 
my friend, that is not what happened at Pentecost. That's right, right. Pentecost happened but once. The power is still available today. Yes. All oh, that we would have that power. All oh, to feel the wind of heaven blowing up. I think about Pentecostal winds and I, I think of providential winds. And there comes that moment when you long to feel the wind blowing again. I, I, I think of when when Paul had desire, you remember, uh, to go into Asia and, and, and the God did not allow him and, and he would have uh, gone into Bithynia and, and, and uh, the Lord forbade him. There he was at, at Troas and, and, and in the darkness of the night of Macedonia he, he called him and the Bible says the next day they set sail and made a straight course my friends, the only way that you can make a straight course in those waters is if the wind fills your sails. If you were to study the geography of that region, you would notice that the turbulent waters in that area are stirred all the more by currents that flow uh, from the north uh, through a straight... Those are uh, tempestuous seas. Paul said, we made a straight course. That's only possible if the wind fills their sails. Oh, to see the wind filling our sails again. Yeah, yeah. We long for those winds. I think of Pentecostal winds and I think of providential winds, but then I'll warn you of perilous winds. And there are some who say uh, unity at any cost. Mm even if it means ignoring doctrine, <clears throat> then you need to explain to me certain passages of Scripture right, yes. where the Bible speaks of the church as being the pillar yes. and the ground of the truth. Right. You need to explain to me why Paul rebuked the carnal church at Corinth and he said of that church, by the way, that was characterized not by unity, but disunity. And Paul said, it seems like every one of you have your own doctrine. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have your own uh, twist of things as, as you want to see it. It's interesting he said that to a carnal church and a church that was seen not as being unified, but as being divided. Right. Now he says to the church at Ephesus, he said, for the sake of, verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith. But he says to them, don't be carried about by every wind of doctrine. When the winds blow from this direction and that and the other direction, my friend, let us be quick to admonish one another. Don't be carried about by yeah. every wind. Uh, we long to see the wind filling our sails. But you better be careful of which direction that wind is blowing you. Mm -hmm. Some may say, well, we have unity. and We don't have the same doctrine, but there is somebody that needs to explain to me why the scripture says our fellowship is in the truth. Yes. Yeah. And so we don't agree on the doctrine, but there is unity. Paul said, for the sake of unity, he said, beware that you be carried about by every. Yes. You know, some folks, they get to the place to where they just want to see some movement. Mm. They, they just want to see the, the sails uh, uh, rattled again by, by the brick. They want to see the sun. There is that place near the equator called the doldrums uh, where the winds die and, 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 and there's nothing to carry the vessels along the, uh, the surface of, of, of the deep. Uh, there's that place known as a sargasso the sea that, uh, that a great body of of of, of the, the seaweed and, and, and other debris and, 
as big as our country is, it stretches across a certain part of the Atlantic. There have been many a ship that's found themselves entangled in such a... All the desire, my friend, that is oftentimes filled the heart of the seafarer just for a breeze to carry us some direction. Mm -hmm. And yet, there's oftentimes a person who admits, I'm not sure where we're going, but we're getting there fast. <laughs> my friend, you better stop and ask, them, which way is this wind carrying us? Yeah. Many a ship has found themselves wrecked on the shores of an island inhabited by cannibals. Yeah. He said, not carried about by every wind of doctrine. Sometimes a church becomes discouraged because the wind hasn't blown in a long time. And they're just glad for any wind that will blow it off. And there's this doctrine, and that doctrine, and this, and, and the other, and this idea, and the other suggestion, and this opinion, and, and the other. My friend, all those winds coming together, that's not a revival, that's a tornado. That's right, yeah. yeah. He said, be careful that you're not carried about by every wind of doctrine. God will still bless His church that stands firm yes, in amen. the truth. He will still bless His and smile upon His people when they're not satisfied with just any wind. But they wait for heaven's wind mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and rejoice when it fills their sails. It's interesting that Paul writes to this church at Ephesus and in this passage I just read, he speaks of unity and he speaks of love. Sometimes for the sake of unity and love, churches, they avoid doctrine. Mm -hmm. And they avoid the uh, more somber truths. In this passage of Scripture, we read of unity and we read of love. But my friend, it was not at the cost of forsaking doctrine. That's right, yes. He said, henceforth we be not as children carried about by every wind of doctrine. And isn't it an amazing thing? Isn't it an amazing thing that there are some that are grab a hold of a doctrine and they think that they've gotten so far beyond everybody? Mm -hmm. Our Calvinist friends are very much like this. Yeah. In fact, one of the first things they'll tell you, oh, the reason you don't agree with uh, the, the, the Calvinism is because uh, you, you just aren't to the place to where you can understand the Bible uh, like you should. My friend, I think I got a pretty good grasp on for whosoever will. Yes. And that was good for me when I got saved, and that's what's going to get me to the other shore, mm -hmm. because I'm one of those whosoever wills. But somebody said, or somebody who's maybe in the charismatic movement, they said, oh, you just don't have the gift. You're just not. But notice he says that you be not like children, mm -hmm. henceforth, carried about by every wind of doctrine. My friends, when we are quick to reach for this doctrine and that doctrine and these deeper truths that maybe it seems nobody else has ever seen, in fact, when we would try to make ourselves look so smart in the eyes of others, we are not nearly as mature as we pretend to be. He said, be not children carried about by every wind of doctrine. I'm saying this. God will bless his church when his people stand in the truth. That's right. He'll bless his church when we preach the truth. 
Uh, let's <coughs> long for heaven's wind, not just any wind that'll fill our sails. Richard. Yes, amen. Amen. Great challenge from God's word. Amen. Well, let's pray, and we'll be we'll close our Sunday school service, and then uh, we'll get ready for our Sunday morning service. Our Father, we thank you so much for the message that we've heard. And Lord, it, we do live in uh, strange days, but Lord, they're not strange to you. Uh, you are fully aware of everything that goes on, not just in our own country, but in countries all across the world. And the truth is still getting the job done. And Father, I pray that you help us to always stand on the truth of your word. I pray that we might speak the truth in love. And uh, Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, to be uh, directed by the wind that is blowing from heaven. Lord, we want your direction in our life, not what our, our will is, but what your will is for us. And uh, Father, I just pray as we have our services here this week, uh, Lord, just want your will to be done. And uh, sometimes, Lord, we just get busy with the hustle and bustle of life. I pray you help it. Help us to quiet our hearts before you and quiet our minds. And, and Lord, help us here for these few services we have to just uh, keep our attention where it needs to be. So, Lord, we can truly hear from heaven that you will give us direction in each and every one of our lives and our circumstances. And, Lord, we will be encouraged and challenged to just keep on the firing lines because, Lord, one day we're going to be with you and it will be worth it all at that time. And Father, we just pray and ask these things, Lord, and ask your blessing now on each and every one of us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.